Hello and welcome to this channel. Today we are going to talk about part 2 of the Firebase Analytics in Flutter. We are talking about user properties and audiences. Firebase Analytics allows you to define user properties to describe the attributes of your users. This can be anything from user preferences to recent activities within your app. By defining user properties, you can segment your user base according to the specific attributes you set. This can be incredibly helpful when analyzing your app's performance among different user groups. For example, you can set a user property to indicate a user's favorite genre in a music app and then analyze listening behavior among users who prefer different genres. In the last video of this series, we talked about logging events. Based on the definition of user properties, it seems that they are both the same thing. In Firebase Analytics, logging events and setting user properties serve different but complementary purposes. In logging events, events are user interactions with content that can be tracked independently from a web page or a screen load. For example, button clicks, form submissions, or page scrolls. These events can have associated parameters which provide additional information about the specific interaction. For example, in a music streaming app, you might log an event when a user plays a song. The associated parameters could include the song title, artist, and genre. Events are mainly used to understand user behavior and interactions within the app. They can help answer questions like, what actions are users taking in the app? Or what features are being used the most? This event logging was discussed in the previous video. And setting user properties, on the other hand, describe attributes of the user. And they persist across all events logged by a given user. They are set once and then associated with every event logged thereafter. For example, you might set a user properties for a user subscription status, like free or premium. This user property can then be associated with all events logged by that user, allowing you to segment events based on the user subscription status. User properties help answer questions like who are my users? Or what characteristics do my users have? Some of the key differences between events and user properties. Events are used to track actions, while user properties are used to store information. Events are limited to a maximum of 256 characters, while user properties can be up to 100,000 characters long. You can set up to 25 different user properties per project. Note that user property names are case sensitive. You can create events and user properties and lock them interchangeably, but the way they are processed inside the Firebase requires you to differentiate between logging events and user properties. Firebase Analytics supports several types of user properties. For example, predefined user properties include age, gender, interest, and device model, among others. These properties are automatically collected and processed by Firebase. Firebase also allows you to create custom user properties. These are properties that you define yourself based on the unique needs of your app. For example, if you have a music app, you might create a custom user property for favorite genre or listening frequency. Custom user properties can be incredibly valuable for deeper analysis of your user base. They allow you to filter and segment users based on specific behavior or attributes that are not captured by the predefined user properties. For example, in a gaming app, you could create a custom user property to track which level a user has reached. 
This can help you understand where users are having difficulties and might need additional guidance or tutorial. This is the default Flutter application that I have modified a bit. As you can see, we have three different buttons and users can click on them to choose their favorite sport. And based on these, we can add user properties for this user and we can set their favorite sport. So inside the code, we talked about the initialization and how to start adding Firebase analytics in the previous videos. This is all the same and then here we have a list of string of sports and then list of boolean is selected to see which one is selected. And then this is the event that we added in the previous video, logging events in the increment counter. And inside the build function, we have these three toggle buttons. In toggle buttons, we are going to check if a user selects any of these buttons. Then we are going to set user property. And inside the user property, we are going to set the name and the value. The name is going to be favorite sport. And value is going to be sports index which is going to be the index of the one that user has selected. So if the index is zero, the sport is going to be football. And that's all I added to the code. Now let's go to the Firebase. Inside the Firebase, inside Analytics, we go to Custom Definitions. Inside Custom Definitions, and we select Custom Dimensions tab. We click on create custom dimensions. We name the dimension any name you want, but you need to be descriptive because later on when you come back to this page, you need to know what these are about. In the scope, you are going to select user. In description, you can describe what this dimension is. And then in user property, we are going to create a user property. As you can see, the defaults are not what we are looking for. We are looking for the favorite sport. So you need to type this here, favorite sport. And then you click on save. I have already saved one here. As you can see, the name is sports. The scope is user. And the user property is favorite underline sport. As you can see, there are other options as well. In the scope, we have event, we have user, we have item, and we also have custom metrics. So I include a reference in the video description. You can go through each of the options because they are a lot. There are many possibilities, so we cannot cover them in one video. But once you know the basics, you can easily read the documentation and figure out what they are. So this is how you set the user properties inside the Firebase and inside your code. So let's continue by talking about audiences. Audiences are a powerful tool for understanding user behavior in your app. You can use them to monitor the performance of specific user segments, track the impact of promotional campaigns, and much more. And once you have defined user properties, you can start creating audiences in Firebase Analytics. An audience is essentially a group of users who share common attributes or behavior. As an example, consider an e-commerce application where users can browse and purchase various products. As an app developer or marketer, you might want to track certain user properties like preferred product category or average spend per visit. For instance, you can define an audience of high spenders, users whose average spend per visit is above a certain threshold. You can also create an audience of fashion enthusiasts, users whose preferred product category is fashion. Let's consider two example reports. The first report shows the average spend per visit for high spenders audience. 
We can see trends over time and whether any particular event like a sale or an app update have significantly impacted this metric. And how can these insights inform changes to our app or marketing strategy? If we notice that high spenders tend to spend more after a particular type of sale event, we might want to run those sales more often. Now let's go back to Firebase. Inside the Firebase, we go to Analytics and we go to Audiences. In the Audiences, you may see two groups by default, All Users and Purchasers. These are created by default. So we need to create new audience. Inside the new audience, you can see there are two groups. One start from scratch and one use a reference. Firebase has created some groups for you, which are really interesting. In general, you can see recently active users. You can use this as a reference and create an audience. You can see non-purchasers, purchasers, 7-day inactive users. You can use this group and create an audience to see which users have not been active in the past 7 days. And for example, you can send them notifications or give them a voucher to encourage them to come back to your app and use your app. We also have 7 days inactive purchasers. Another category is templates. You have the option of demographics, technology, and acquisition. In predictive, which is really interesting, you have the option to have likely 7-day purchasers, predicted 28-day top spenders. So this is where Firebase is going to predict the behavior of users for you based on these default groups. But for us, for now, we are going to create a custom audience. We click on this and here we include users when you need to create new condition. In the new condition, you can choose an event. You can choose a dimension. Remember that we created the dimension for favorite sport. So we go to custom and we select sports. When the sport, so we are going to focus on sports. Now we need to add a condition. You can add a condition based on many criteria. For example, begins with, ends with, contains and so on. So we choose contains and we select football, for example and we click apply. You can add another condition or you can add and condition and so on. You can add group to exclude the users who are not supposed to be in this group. So it can be very simple audience or it can be very complex audience based on multiple criteria. This all depends on your app and your requirement and the question you want to answer. You can also have the option to choose membership duration for how long users are part of this behavior. And then you click on save. But remember that this audience and when you create your user property and your audience, it takes 24 to 48 hours to appear on Firebase. So don't expect this to be in real time. That's why I have already created this audience based on the app that, and I can see one users that is part of this audience. It also gives you different statistics like the app version they are using, users on which device using your app and on which platform using your app. So user properties and audiences are really powerful tools for analysis of your users and you can gain insights for your application and how to engage your audience and engage your users. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.